Hi guys, how are you? I hope all of you are having a fantastic day. Welcome back to EP Science Virtual Class. And once again, this is Jandrox Educator TV, your host for today. For today's video, we are going to talk about food webs. So what are the important role of those organisms within the ecosystem? As we can remember that all organisms, living organisms need food, shelter, and protection. Now, my question is, how does an organism grow, live, and survive within the ecosystem? Remember, one of the most common causes of interaction between organisms is the need for food. Organisms can be classified into three groups, right? According to the rules in the ecosystem. In food web, Organisms are classified into three. These are producers, consumers, and decomposers. Under consumers, we have primary consumer or consumer number one. Next is secondary consumer or consumer number two. And the last one is tertiary consumer or consumer number three. All these groups of organisms plays an important role in different ecosystems. Why is it food necessary in every living organism? This time, we will talk about the role of producers in an ecosystem. Who are those organisms? And what are their primary functions within the ecosystem? Producers are organisms that produce their own food from the non-living components within the environment, okay? So, these are, for example, green plants. They are considered as producers. So, how plants obtain nutrients and energy in order to grow and that could be served as food from other living organisms, all right? Remember that plants gave us oxygen and carbon dioxide. Producers are organisms that produce their own food, can manufacture their own food. They have their own ability and capability to produce their own food for other living organisms. Because of the producers, they provides us food for every living organisms in which humans and animals cannot do it. These are all unique contributions of the producers in which humans, animals can do themselves. Human and animals are dependent within the ecosystem which is given and being contributed by the producers, right? Next organisms that we are going to discuss is consumers. Consumers. What is consumers? Who are those consumers? What are their job or functions within the ecosystem? As we talked earlier that man, animals, and all other types of organisms depend within the ecosystem which is given by the producers so we are dependent okay from the producers especially from the plants fruits and vegetables likewise humans and animals and all other types of organisms we just only consume what the producers contributed to us what is the meaning of the word consumers how do they play an important contributions to our ecosystem who are those consumers all right so let's talk about it consumers are organisms that eat other organisms or their products coming from the producers all right animals cannot make their own food they depend on plants or other animals for food. Is it true? 
Therefore, all animals are consumers. Humans are consumers. All other living organisms, okay, from large animals to smallest insects, so they depend from other organisms. It could be from consumers to producers or consumers within the consumers. So that's the way how they grow, they live and survive. It depends on their own habitat. Consumers are classified into three. These are primary consumers, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers. Who are those primary consumers? So I will cite few basic examples in order for you to understand the role of primary consumers, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers. As we could remember that these consumers plays a very important factor within the ecosystem because they are the one who eats, okay, consumed those organisms which is given by the producers. Who are these primary consumers? So usually, they are considered as an herbivores, okay, that it feeds directly on plants. See, for example, who are those herbivores? Right? So remember, animals that eat plants or plant eaters. See, for example, animals in a grassland or farmland like carabao, cow or cattle, pigs, and all other types of herbivores and what is the role of secondary consumers so what are their job or contributions in the ecosystem as secondary consumers these are animals which feeds on primary consumers means to say that these secondary consumers it feed directly to primary consumers these secondary consumers can be called carnivores and omnivores. What do you mean by the word carnivores? We are animals that eat animals. And what about omnivores? We are animals that eat plants and animals. These group of animals are usually bigger and larger in sizes third type of consumers is what we call tertiary consumers or consumer number three so what are their particular contributions within the ecosystem and how do they grow and survive in particular tertiary consumers are even larger animals which feed on the secondary consumers all these types of consumers right there is what we call a symbiotic relationship means to say give and take relationship someone could benefit the other will be harmed or even killed and the other are not harmed so there are certain things that might happen in this particular activity during food web and even food chain. Here's the last type of organism under food web and that is what we call decomposers. So what is the meaning of the word decomposers? What is the job of decomposers in the ecosystem? So from the word they are the one will decompose or eats those Dead organisms. Decomposers are organisms that break down dead animal and plant materials. So from the word decomposed, right? Into a simpler substance which can be used again by green plants. So you will see the cycle that all living organisms, the finality, right? 
it ends up into the soil and they will be decomposed. The examples of decomposers are bacteria and fungi. So, how do they play as decomposers in the ecosystem? Because decomposers will act, okay? Once the main producers, the consumers, died. These are all important classification of organisms in a food web relationship and also in a food chain relationship. Alright? So these are producers. Two, consumers. Three, decomposers. Alright? So under consumers, we have primary consumers. Next, secondary consumers and tertiary consumers. So all of those plays an important role in the ecosystem to make it balance and it creates okay in what we call interactions of every living organisms. This time I'm going to show you the feeding relationship between producers and consumers and how can be obtained the source of energy coming from the producers going down to decomposers. So those consumers act on it, right? When it comes to energy consumption. Say for example here, what do you mean by the word food chain? And what are those consumers involved? Let us remember that in a food chain, the feeding relationship between producers and consumers can be obtained by series types. So just only one line, right? Unlike in a food web that there are many consumers involved. Here's the example of food chain. There are five organisms involved. First, we start from producer, which is rice rat, snake, hawk, bacteria, and fungi. So, all those types of organisms plays an important component within the ecosystem or in a particular habitat. Let us read and analyze about the feeding relationship between the producers and consumers within the series level of food chain. Now, I'm going to show you what are the particular job of those organisms starting from the producers, from the primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers, and finally bacteria and fungi. For this example of food chain, we start from rice plant that act as producer. So, there is another organism, what we call a primary consumer, which is a rat. So, how rat obtain energy? So, they need to find food. So, rice was being eaten by a rat as a source of their food and energy. However, we have a secondary consumer, right? This is what we call snake. How this secondary consumer obtain food for its own energy? The snake. Snake finds some food which is obtained going to primary consumer. Alright? So, rat was being eaten by the snake. However, there is what we call a tertiary consumer that needs also to survive. So, that bird or hawk needs to find and catch food to the secondary consumer so what happened is snake was being eaten by hawk hawk will be considered as the tertiary consumer who obtained the last consumption of energy right coming from the rice plant rat and the snake hawk will be the last consumer obtain those energy taken from the snake or the secondary consumer. Unfortunately, that hawk or bird died. And is that the end? Of course not. We have what we call the last organism. This is what we call bacteria and fungi. These bacteria and fungi 
acts as the composer for dead plants and animals. So this is the way how feeding relationship or the energy consumption between producers and consumers can be written, right? Starting from the rice plant or producers, then rice was being eaten by rats act as a primary consumer. However, there is a snake. So in order that snake can survive, rat was being eaten by the snake. However, there is another consumer. This is what we call a hawk. So, hawk eats snake, right? In order to survive. However, hawk died, or any other animals eat that bird. And then, what happened? There is what we call bacteria and fungi that used to decompose those dead plants or animals. And that could be the final level of the food chain. Now, let's make it clear. How does food chain written in a series level, right? In a straight form. Rice act as producer was being eaten by the rat. Then rat was being eaten by the snake. And then the snake, which is the secondary consumer, was eaten by a hawk, which hawk act as tertiary consumer. But finally, once a hawk died, so bacteria and fungi act as decomposer, okay, which can be obtained again back to the producer, which is the plant. Therefore, in real life ecosystem, feeding relationship among organisms are complex, right? Someone wins, someone loses. Other benefits, other harms, or even killed. Most organisms eat more than one type of food. So take note that these organisms always have a competition in order to obtain higher level of energy, all right? So between large or bigger animals or the small insects. Therefore, food chain are interconnected with each other, but not so much organisms. So probably there are two or three types of organisms involved. So guys, this is the end of our topic for today regarding about food web and food chain. So I hope you learned something from this. Let's do a practice test. Alright guys, please don't forget to answer your quizzes and assignment at the Google Classroom in the AP website. Thank you so much for listening and watching this video. Stay home, stay safe, enjoy learning at home. Good luck!